Good afternoon and welcome to First Local Afternoons with Heidi and Colette. And Heidi's angry with me right now. Well, not angry. You could never well, not be angry. Yet. Could never be angry. So Mike says, and Colette, I have that thing ready for you. And Heidi's like, what thing? I said, don't worry about it. Go live quick before Heidi kills me. So Jim Witty, our friend uh, and, and neighbor here who lives on St. Joe's, went to high school with Heidi. And don't worry, there's no high school pictures involved in this um, disclaimer at the bottom here that we should probably have. He made this image and I found it hilarious. Let's share that, Michael. Romper room, and there is Heidi doing her social media. Like, what she sees doing? you, she sees you. You're just seeing us, so she sees. I got she my sees fingers Tamara, in my eyes. What are you and she about? sees Colette, and she's Romper Romper, Romper Do. I think it's so cute. Thank you, Jim Witty, for sending that in. He is yeah, a, thanks a lot, Jim Witty. <laughs> he is witty, that Jim. Yep, and he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, See, I told you it was harmless. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that to you, sister. Harmless. Harmless. We uh -huh. are waiting for the premiere to pop up. That's when, right. Yeah, so, um, Some color commentary. Color commentary post-premiere. post, post -premiere. So we have to get right into the news. He's so pushy in our ear. In our ear. Okay, well, you didn't say what news we're getting to. Many <laughs> people have discovered the splendor of Bridgerton in the form oh, of the Duke of Hastings. Forgot. Monsieur Regé Jean Page, who plays the Duke of Hastings That's and has me. played it. Mm. Um, there he is mm. with his mm -hmm. uh, on screen love, mm -hmm. Daphne, mm -hmm. Daphne Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. um, he is not returning for <laughs> season two. <laughs> I need clean And hearts have broken all over the world. Um, it has been suggested that perhaps he may have gotten too big for his handsome bridges. Why do they have to do that? Right? Well, apparently, apparently, um, you know, he's had obviously, you know, a very beautiful man uh, with his talents, mm -hmm. um, has had many competitive offers for mm. his, his acting gifts and his on... <clears throat> screen presence. What kind of presence are you referring to? Well, 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 watch Bridgerton season okay. one. Okay, <laughs> so this, okay, okay. But anyway, okay, 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 okay. So what's happening though is that when Bridgerton comes back, although he is still a key player, yeah. um, he is not the like the focus because of course mm. season one, for those of you know, focused on the, you know, encompassed story arc of, you know, he and Daphne and the courtship and then yes. you know, I'm not gonna give away the ending for those of you who haven't seen it, but it's very much like a nice tight little it's story. So romantic. Um and so now season two is going to focus on one of the other Bridgertons, mm -hmm. um, you know, and their quest for love in the uh, the upcoming social seasons so um, apparently leaving on good terms I um, which I don't that. know I, mean, like, I, 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 empty, I call right? BS like, I mean, everything that ends one. badly or it wouldn't end That's right? right so um, but anyway uh, he is wished well he apparently uh, he has hosted a gig on Saturday Night Live this oh. past February I missed Did you that see it? I, what? No, what? What? what 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 going back <laughs> on demand has a purpose and I'm gonna tell you I know how to use that <laughs> I'm gonna be using so, it so like, yeah so that's uh, that's that's our breaking news <laughs> 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 top of this <laughs> yeah breaking news so well that's unfortunate and I blame you for getting me hooked on that show and now oh, oh. The little oh. cutie's not coming back, but that's okay. I mean, don't get too big for your boots, dude. Well, you know, you gotta kind of dance with the one who brought you, right? That's the saying that I've always heard. So, you know, you kind of ride that right through to the end. And there was a lot of riding on the first one. <laughs> so, we should probably pop into some more news. Can you say that on the air? I, okay, we're just gonna gloss over that. Okay, I next, I don't know what news. you're talking about. I just meant more riding news. his coattails because well, he's a very sure, main, yes. main component yes. of the first season. Yes. All right, well, and they, they horseback. Lots of horseback. Yes. <laughs> okay, in oh, saying that, let's talk about today's numbers that were released for from the province. Uh, 3,700 people have been tested or been um, infected with COVID-19. That's what the numbers are reporting today. Yeah. Yep. 15 additional deaths as well. There were 42,167,000 ,000 tests done. And um, that is is down a little bit from the 48,000 that was done just 24 hours ago. Okay. I am happy to report that on Sunday we were at 1,300 in Toronto, yesterday we were at 1,200, and today they're at a cool 1,016. So okay. trending in the right direction, yes. however still 
insanely high. Um, okay. 613 in Peel, 519 in York, 214 in Ottawa, 196 okay. in Durham. Locally, we are sitting at 45. One of those cases is a non-Algoma resident and Correct. one is hospitalized. I don't know if that would be the non-Algoma resident who is okay. hospitalized. So um, we will continue to watch those numbers. And again, the Premier is popping on pretty soon with Christine Elliott, the Minister of Health, to discuss the vaccine rollout. And in, in the meantime, I'm told that Craig's ready to pop on. Oh, well then, we should go find pop, out. Pop, poppity pop, Craig, <laughs> what you got? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, just as we expected, the uh, clouds and rain have moved. Well, not the, the clouds, but the rain has moved to the north. And we're going to see some uh, sun and some breaks today. We'll take a look at the radar, show you exactly what I mean. Oh, still waiting for the radar. Uh, we do have some winds uh, picking up later on this afternoon from the south. And that's going to help boost our temperatures up to about 11 degrees by about 5 o'clock today. We'll take a look now at the radar. Uh, full screen, there you go. And we can see we may just may get that little bit of clearing as that rotation around that low pressure system, which is off to our west. Um, so we may, we're going to definitely stay dry for most of our day today. And we don't anticipate any more showers moving into the area till after midnight. The big thing is, will those showers be rain or will it be snow and right now it looks like it could be snow because our temperatures will dip lower than we thought tonight to minus one and just to give you an idea winnipeg is seeing five to ten centimeters from this low pressure system and they're stuck in the snow and that is kind of tracking our way so currently for, for the rest of the day we are looking uh, at 10 degrees right now uh, winds are from the southwest at 9 kilometers an hour. They're going to swing around to the south later on today. Pressure is rising. And again, we don't anticipate any showers heading our way. We'll take a look at the rest of the day right now. Oh, there we go. Uh, seven day forecast. Uh, wasn't supposed to be the seven day forecast, but we'll go with it. Uh, we'll see, see if some sun for Friday. Friday looks about the, the nicest day this week. And then we have some more cloud rolling in, but temperature is still uh, well above seasonal, so we'll take that. Well, we will take that, and thank you very much. Yes. And are we taking this premiere at any time? He's uh, late for lunch, maybe? I don't know what's going on, but uh, we'll throw to him when he pops up. Over to you. Okay. Well, <laughs> until we see um, him. So we've, you know, been a lot of discussion with regards to the vaccinations. When are they coming? How long is the appropriate amount of time to lapse between first dose and second dose? And mm -hmm. then there was the announcement that Canada had ordered um, a quantity of these single dose uh, vaccinations quantity. that had been developed uh, through Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. And now the recommendation is that oh, we've got Dougie. Oh, I guess we oh. should go to him for the vaccination rollout, although he right. has the proper That's right. information. Okay, over to Toronto, to the Premier and the Minister of Health. My friend. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to the BAPS Swamiran Complex. We are very excited as we launch Ontario's first provincial vaccine clinic in the presence of Premier Doug Ford. In the joy of others lies our own. This motto of Pramukh Swami Maharaj the founder of BAPS Charities, has driven the dedication and activities of the organization to serve communities around the world. We are proud to say that these motivating words continue to inspire community support even in the midst of a pandemic. Over the past 14 months, BAPS Charities has supported communities in Ontario and across Canada by donating PPE, distributing care packages, making phone calls of support, educating people through webinars, and organizing other in initiatives. Most recently, in the month of March, BAPS Charities distributed more than 130,000 surgical grade masks to families and communities across Ontario and Canada and over 20,000 pounds of non-perishable food to food banks. During this pandemic, His Holiness Mahan Swami Maharaj, the inspirer of BAPS, has encouraged volunteers to help in local communities where possible. 
following the rules and guidelines of the government. BAPS has organized similar vaccine clinics in our centers in the USA, India, and England as needed. We thank the government of Ontario for selecting BAPS charities and to give us this opportunity to host a vaccine clinic here and serve the community. I would also like to thank the Ministry of Health for their support and applaud the volunteers of BAPS charities who have stepped up, many taking time off from work to help set up and run this clinic to serve the community. We encourage everyone to take advantage of such clinics and remind everyone that even after you receive your first dose, it is very important to continue following Ontario's public health guidelines. It is now my pleasure to welcome Premier Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, and request him to address the community. Thank you. Well, first of all, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you, Yogesh, for that introduction. And thanks to the BAPS Charities for hosting us here today at the site of this vac new vaccine clinic. BAPS Charities has really stepped up throughout the pandemic, donating more than 130,000 masks to communities right across this country. And their volunteers have now taken on a challenge of setting up this pop-up vaccine clinic as part of our accelerated rollout to get needles into arms in high-risk neighborhoods. As we continue to make steady progress vaccinating our seniors and most vulnerable, they're helping get vaccines to the residential and industrial neighbors here in Etobicoke, many of whom are essential workers. It's incredible, and I want to thank you again for what you're doing right here. I want to also recognize Councillor Michael Ford, who is here with us today, and thank him for his incredible work on behalf of the great people of Etobicoke North. And my friends, we're relying on vaccination sites just like this one, vaccine clinics that will get thousands of shots done in the heart of communities where they will have the greatest impact in our fight against COVID-19. Because getting ahead of this virus, ending these lockdowns, reopening our schools, getting our small businesses back on their feet, will all come down to one thing, vaccines. How fast we get vaccines into our province and into arms. How fast we can vaccinate critical mass of the population. The faster we get to that critical mass, the faster we can end lockdowns, open schools, and get life back to normal. And we all have a part to play. We need the federal government to continue leading the charge on getting us as many vaccines as possible. We need each of you to sign up and get your vaccine as soon as you're eligible. And for our part, we will continue building up capacity to get shots in arms. Over the past few months, we have ramped up our vaccine infrastructure. We now have the capacity to do millions of vaccines a month. And our capacity to get needles into arms grows every day. Where they are needed most, with the new clinics like this one at the BAPS Temple. Last Friday, we expanded vaccine eligibility to all adults 50 and older in COVID hotspots. Yesterday, we began vaccinating education workers in hotspots neighborhoods in Peel and in Toronto. We have special teams across the province in hotspot communities vaccinating those at greatest risk of infection, including essential workers who cannot work from home. Because it's critical that we stop COVID in these communities where it is spreading the fastest. That's why we're protecting those most at risk in 114 highly impacted neighborhoods across the province. This pop-up clinic will begin vaccinating local residents starting tomorrow. Community outreach will be led by the best people for the job, 
BAPS Charities, William Osler Health System, and local community organizations. These are the people with strong relationships with the surrounding community. These are the people who can build trust to combat vaccine hesitancy and protect their most vulnerable. At mobile vaccine clinics like BAPS and other high-risk neighborhoods, we are beginning to vaccinate adults 18 and over. We're opening employer-operated vaccine clinics right at the job sites. They're also vaccinating residents of surrounding communities. This is how we're protecting our workers and who can't work and, and go uh, work at home, I should say. Uh, that's how we're going to protect these folks. We're fighting the virus with everything we've got, and vaccines remain our best defense. We have managed to vaccinate over 3.3 million Ontarians so far, and our pace of vaccine delivery is increasing rapidly. We're getting vaccines in arms as soon as we receive them. If we receive a steady supply of vaccine from the federal government, we expect to vaccinate 9 million Ontarians between April and the end of June. In the meantime, we must all do our part now and stay home to save lives. Before I hand it over to NPP and on, I want to wish our incredible Health Minister and Deputy Premier, Christine Elliott, a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Christine. Actually, I called Christine and sang her a little song this morning, left it on her, her voicemail. Uh, I'll, I'll never make a career out of singing, I'll tell you that. But I'll, I'll tell you, Christine, uh, as, as you've seen right from the beginning, has uh, worked hard to help uh, keep us safe throughout this whole pandemic and has stood side by side with me uh, right from the get-go. So we're very, very grateful to have Christine with us. I want to thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll hand it over to MPP Anon. Thank you, Premier. Namaste and Jai Swami Narayan. Good afternoon, everybody. It is my pleasure to be here. My pleasure glass to case be of here. With well, and welcome back. Uh, you just caught me in my glass case of emotion. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Anchorman, glass case of emotion. <laughs> right up there with milk being a bad choice. <laughs> it's a bad choice. Well, it's a bad choice for you. It's a terrible choice for me. All yeah. the milk all the way. She had to teach me how to use an EpiPen. Like, what? <laughs> Blue to the sky or to the sky. Right. Um, okay, okay. So talking about needles. Yeah, so, you know, so there was an update kind of about mm. the stuff we already knew. <laughs> so, but, you know, and, and thank you for, yes, keeping the transparency transparent. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. The allegedly. Allegedly. We need the definition of that. <laughs> so anyway, I was in the middle of the story yes, about the one, the single dose uh, vaccinations that were produced through Johnson & Johnson and how Canada has pre-ordered 10 million doses yeah. of the shot with an option to order another 20 million more. But now it's been recommended that the shots be put on hold because um, six women have had some serious complications involving blood clots. One person is in hospital. One person has actually died. Um, now, what, what the company is saying is that, okay, so these reactions are so rare that they were not picked up in the trials. So they want to put that right out there first and foremost. These reactions, the blood clotting, mm -hmm. the low platelet count, um, very rare. They did trials with 44,000 people, and so rare is the reaction that it was not it was not recorded during yeah. these trials. So mm. um, at this point, more than 6.8 million doses of this vaccine have been administered in the U.S. to date. Okay, so again, Dr. Paul, Paul Ofit, mm -hmm. and he is a member of the FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee, and says the clots didn't come up in the trials again because it is such a rare, ev uh, a rare event. So um, they have been put on pause, so they're, okay. uh, they're doing some further investigations, and we will keep you up to date on the information around Man, arounding, eh? is that kind of like surrounding, but it's like around, <laughs> but it's like surround around, surrounding, arounding. <laughs> arounding. If that isn't a As word, it should be. It's Heidi's word of the day, that's allegedly. Right. Um, okay, Heidi Heidi so thanks vision. for that. That thought, like, that's not awesome, but it's awesome that we caught that story. And, yeah, and that's so, you know, AstraZeneca and Moderna, and I guess Pfizer is 
Pfizer is wiser. There you go. Um, okay, so that's I my opinion, by the way, yeah, not the opinion. Yeah, of we the need that station. flashing disclaimer. The that's opinions right. of Heidi and Colette do not reflect upon the station itself. Um, Toronto is saying that as this third wave of uh, COVID overtakes this province, yes, and it is overtaking the Toronto area very well. Ontario hospitals are turning into war zones. So I actually found a very interesting part of this article that really kind of just boils it down is. The number of which the 4,500 people that were infected or who tested positive a couple days ago. Okay. In Ontario, maybe in the ICU two weeks from now. So that's what they're saying. You know, although we're we're trending downward, which yes. that's fantastic. There's still those that 4,500 people and that 3,300 people and the, yes. the 3,200 people that in two weeks from now are going to be in dire need of an ICU bed. Not only are they running out of beds for these patients or allegedly <laughs> they're running out of beds for these patients we're running out of um doctors nurses frontline essential workers to care for these for these individuals yes and that's where another huge problem is 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 occurring so in order to free up resources patients are as you know being shuffled around to other hospitals at a much higher rate than before the pandemic um be, patients are being sent to hospitals outside of the gta which again puts us here in Northern Ontario at, you know, a little bit of an alarming state, knowing yep. that that's going to now take the ICU beds. Um, of course, these patients need the ICU beds, but what about when something happens in the Sioux area or the Algoma region right. where one of the residents needs an ICU bed? Yeah. So yeah. the domino effect is real, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to you to finding this article because I really want to dive more into that and, and go into it a little bit deeper for the newscast tomorrow. What? But the health care is attempting to make this room, um, but elective, and again, all those elective um, uh, non-urgent surgeries are being pushed back. Yes. So there's, there's also a yeah. domino effect to that. So there's a bigger story in here, but I just wanted to thank you for finding that article. Well, and I'm and I found it very certain interesting. as well, this ties into something that we touched on very generally yesterday with regards to um, a statement being made that healthcare providers do need to be ready to be deployed to other areas. Uh -huh, so, yeah, yeah. you know, doctors here might be sent there sure, yeah. is how I interpret that. So yeah. um, I, I, I see a variety of strategies kind of being executed in an attempt to mitigate, you know, this yeah. crisis. And so, I did have this yeah. conversation with my parents as well. I think what they're doing is pulling a lot of physicians and nurses out of retirement right now, uh, maybe hiring them as a contractor. So there's there's parts of that that it's a positive thing for okay. those who are in retirement and might want to still come back and practice. But, you know, there's a bigger fact in these ICU beds being available to patients. There's also the people who we need to take care of us. Oh. Okay, so I'm being directed into social media. Okay. Um, so we do have a little <laughs> bit more chit chat than we did yesterday. Awesome. So excellent. Um, I will hop off. Like I, I, I access it now in two ways to make sure that the void doesn't take over and eat the uh, comments. Okay. Carrie A R R I. She says. Afternoon, ladies. Afternoon. And ladies. that could be an iced coffee or it could be a beverage. Are you day drinking, Carrie? Oh, is it Bailey's? It maybe? could be. Perhaps I don't know. A Russian it could mule? be like a, you know, a, a mule? slushy. Is that remember, remember our Oops. vision of the 7 Eleven with the like the little oh, yeah. bar? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you and I wanted to make that the Heidi and Colette thing. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Enika pops in again this afternoon, twice in one day. Enika, oh, how does lucky. a girl get so lucky? Oh. You know, she's a little bit more judicious with her icons in the afternoon. Uh -huh. You know, we have? only have the little wavy hand. No <laughs> cookies, no coffee. <laughs> no um, treat for she's us. very disciplined. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to see your name, Inika. Uh, Steve Child. Oh, Steve C says hello at one. Oh, okay. um, but I do also say that he got frustrated. Sorry, enough of the government. See you in the morning, and he's got a beer, and he's rocking the there horn. Yeah, Steve. Nice, I'm sorry, we nice. missed you. We couldn't get to you <laughs> fast enough. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Tomorrow. Okay. Bradley, um, he's laughing. You guys are great. Is your daughter watching oh, though too, thanks, Bradley? Bradley? Like Haley, are Haley. you out there? Are you laughing too? Haley, can you hear me? <laughs> Remind everybody what? What? What are we? What? Well, oh, oh, like, oh, share. Yes, please like, follow, share. <laughs> like, Let follow, other people share. know. Twice a day, you can tap into our antics, uh, our, our, you know, our <laughs> regurgitation of the news, our interpretations of the news. Yeah. You know, it's important that everybody be exposed to our version of of. Uh, well, we are the only. 
the only new show in the soup. So <laughs> we're transparent. There it is. There we're we go. Trans we are transparent. <laughs> allegedly. 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 And we preserve anonymity. Oh, man. Wherever oh, possible. You see how I just like trot that yeah, out? Yeah, you did. Anonymity. What was that word this morning? Delineate? Delineate? Delineate. Joseph B. from Maker North says, Good day. Good day, Joseph. Tossing some shrimp on the bobby, <laughs> are you? Good day. All right. Jim. <laughs> Listen. Taking liberties cute. with my image, are you? It wasn't cute. Oh, I don't like those sorts of things. These things must come through the Heidi filter. <laughs> I have full control of my image and I will approve <laughs> any images that are going to be shown. It was a lovely image. Stop it. <laughs> it was. And we already got to Steve. Now I'm just going to hop over okay. into the other one because, um, mm -hmm. so, oh, okay. What? Yeah, what see, oh, and it was oh. worth it. Kimberly says, good afternoon with one exclamation point. Enika is having dinner right now. Oh, right. And it change? appears to be, it could be, what do we got? Could, oh, glasses. What do you definitely a salad, maybe mm. a hamburger. Oh. Uh, although I find the sizes to be disproportionate, so it's probably not a hamburger. <laughs> it's probably a plate of food of some sort. Well, bon appétit. Oh, Inika, enjoy, enjoy. And Marilyn says, good afternoon, everybody. Two little closed winky smileys oh, you like and this. a cup of coffee. Awesome. So thank you very much, everybody, for, you know, taking the time to tune in with us again. For sure. And, uh, yeah, we're going to keep building this because, you know, you build it, they will come. That's you what I hear. They will come. Okay, well, listen, I, again, said yesterday how much I am not a winter person. I'm looking at the wrong camera. I'm a summer person. So I think one day I might be one of these snowbirds who flock back to um, to Canada and back to Florida, you know, one of those. Yes. Because I don't want to see snow ever again. Sure. But uh, with warmer weather approaching, snowbirds are flocking back to Canada, and some of them are finding ways to avoid spending uh, three days in a government-mandated quarantine hotel, which is comes with a hefty, hefty price tag per night. I believe it's over a thousand bucks, I think. Yeah, it's, it's heavy duty. It's not mm -hmm. pretty. So, um, yeah, they are flocking their way back. Um, they, he said that Canadians are coming through and they aren't happy about the restrictions, so they're staying in the U.S. is how they're trying to beat the system here. All in all, it's about a five-hour round trip for drivers who, once in Canada, won't step out of their vehicles. Um, once home in Canada, passengers are to get their own bags from the car so the driver can remain in the vehicle in the entire duration of the trip, blah, blah, blah. So they're driving back, basically, is what I'm trying to say. They're not flying back. They're driving back. They're hopping over and to avoid any of the uh, and Pearson then International. And doing a quarantine once they're here. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. So they are driving back to okay. skip that process okay. and to save them about, I don't know, 4000 bucks. Well, sure, they just spent four months in Florida. They don't have any money left. Wah, wah, so. wah. Wah, wah. wah. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes, 30 seconds left. What are we going to, what damage can we do? Well, <laughs> <laughs> hmm, hmm. accepted. They're accepted. Okay, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, we'll, we'll talk about this one. We'll flirt with this story Ooh, tomorrow morning. Yes, that's a big um, I University. think that it wouldn't come as much of a surprise that uh, <laughs> drinking appears to be on the rise uh, during the pandemic. Some people are, you know, drinking perhaps a little bit more than they usually do. And so it's prompted a discussion around whether or not drinking um, has any any impact on the efficacy of the vaccine yeah. as it gets administered. So uh, experts around the world have been offering varying opinions okay. on the matter. Some say you should avoid drinking alcohol before receiving the vaccine and others say alcohol consumption is not an issue and will not affect um, the efficacy. Again, there's mm -hmm. that word. It's word. like an efficacy. Yeah, it's rolled efficacy. off the tongue very yeah. well. Efficacy. Very, very, very Okay, nice. um, of the COVID-19. So although there is no specific data surrounding COVID-19 vaccines, moderate alcohol use and alcoholism, mm -hmm. there is good reason for that, though, because a Toronto physician uh, has said that in vaccine trials and in research trials in general, when someone has pretty extreme alcohol use, they'll be excluded from the trial for several reasons, you know, having to do with whether or not, you know, the progress of their condition mm -hmm. is, is a direct result of their activities, their drinking, their heavily drinking, um, or if it has to do with a reaction to whatever mm -hmm. it is they're in the trial to um, okay. document. So, um, 
they're saying that there is a theoretical link, mm -hmm. but it's not really a tangible one. So they're saying okay. that moderate, moderate drinking doesn't appear to have an impact. So well, there you go. You know. Well, they're just testing every little thing. Hey, talking about everything, but that's good. Okay, we have a minute and a half left. I want to jump to Air Canada. Ottawa has agreed to bail them out in a six billion, billion dollar package. Air Canada says that uh, this financing, the Canadian government on financing that will allow the airline to access as much as six bill, which transfers over to about 4.7 USD nice. to help it recover from the economic damage caused by this crazy pandemic. As part of this financial package, Air Canada has agreed to a number of commitments related to customer refunds, service to regional communities, restrictions on the use of the funds provided, okay. of course, employment and capital expenditures. In return for the aid, the carrier is offering refunds to customers who bought non-refundable fares but did not travel due to the pandemic since February of 2020. So if you have booked a flight with Air Canada and it was a non-refundable flight, there's your info there to follow up on. Also in exchange for this bailout, the airline is resuming service for all regional communities where service was suspended. Hmm. Although I don't know why you're flying anywhere. I heard that some of the money is being used to, did you say refunds? Yes, some of it, yeah, okay. yeah, they are non-refundable refunds. <laughs> Sorry, I just kind of tuned in for the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I did think everybody else tuned out Did too. you? Did, did you? you? Did you say it? Did you hit it? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. 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 We're done today. <laughs> We're done, sister. See you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m.